Welcome back. Day number two uh, of uh, the Olympics. Yeah, the Olympic windsurfing started. I'm joined once again by Antonio Cosolino. And he's not from Italy. He's living in Holland, but he's been in England and he's got a lot of experience in the windsurfing business. If you were here the last few days, you will know that. Um, just a little bit of uh, a, an intro here. The show we are doing right now is not the show that we really wanted to do. We kind of came together. We had an idea that we would be getting highlight videos and all this cool coverage. And we would be able to talk you through and dissect the races and all this stuff. But since we have found out the Olympics is quite a closed thing with in terms of video, we got banned yesterday by just showing like the minutest of screen grab clips. Um, so we won't be showing you any. We do have some screen grabs, which which are freeze frames, which we might show. We might risk it for a bit of a biscuit. Um, and what we're going to do is try and put a bit more structure in today's show. So we're going to just talk you through what happened today, have a look at a few results, and then we're going to go into it a little bit more in depth for the guys that are really nerdy like us too. How's that sound, Antonio? Sounds pretty good. But um, are you forgetting something? <clears throat> well, that's a good point. We do need someone else to help us out. Now, yesterday we had a gold medalist. Yep, that I mean that's pretty yes. that's pretty cool. So today, I don't we were wondering how could we get better than one gold medalist. Um, we didn't want four people in the stream, so we needed one guy with two gold medals. Yes, uh, we found one. He's all the way over in America at the moment. He is now retired from Olympic windsurfing, uh, but he does have two gold medals in the RSX class. It is someone called Dorian. I don't know. Have you have you seen this guy before? <laughs> yeah, there we yeah. go. And he's got hair now. Everyone knows him because the pictures all over the internet of him with a shaved head. In fact, I should actually find that picture. I probably got it somewhere. I did have it set up the other day. Where is he? Ooh. Is he here? Ooh, no, bit, oh, oh, he's gone. He's gone. Any, anyone who... Um, hey, look, it's Dorian. <laughs> anyone well, who... I, I was, it's all, it's all gone wrong now, but I thought I had it all set up. It's gone, but never mind. Dorian, how are we doing, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, in America, far from uh, anything really going, uh, having to do with the Olympics. It's kind of strange. Um, I'm, I'm having a good time, though. But my wife keeps telling me, not what you thought five years ago, was it, that you would be here in the it's house? Weird. It, I was going to say, how is it watching it? Just, I mean, obviously you've got the family and everything. So life has probably switched around a little bit. As I said before, you have kind of retired now from at least Olympic sailing. Yeah. Um, how is it feeling to watch the Olympics? It's, well, it, it, I've, I've got some practice in because of the last couple of competitions during COVID. So I've, but it's kind of, the weirdest part is not being there. Not so much not racing, but just not being there, seeing the regular people, the press officers, uh, uh, the coaches, the other athletes, and just there. It's kind of like they're having a party without me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it must be it is a strange one, isn't it? It must be a strange one. And obviously, for people who don't know, uh, Dorian, I think, if you're not into the Olympic Windsor, you might not know, but he had such a close battle to actually be there. Um, lost by what one point or something? It must be, I can't remember, but yeah, no, very good. One point, one place. Kieran beat me at the last world championship. He was first, I was second. Um, I gave everything in the last medal race and I, I finished first. And he needed to finish one place further back, and then it would have been a different story. But it, uh, it is what it is, and he's there with that uh, haircut of his and then <laughs> <laughs> you definitely started something with the with this the bullet head and he's gone for the yeah. the blue arrow um we're gonna go pretty much just straight into results for the people that are here just to go okay what happened today ben just hurry up and tell me um you guys have obviously been watching it we're just gonna bring up the results but we had more win today i mean that was i would say i watched a few of the races on eurosport for anyone else who's trying to find it, I have found pay six ninety nine for Eurosport. You can cancel it after a week, so you only pay for one month, and then you've got it 
online. Um, you can go on your computer and pick the races. They don't show all the races. They don't show men and women both days. Sometimes they just show the men from one course. Um, and the commentary, I'm a little bit biased, but it's very unemotional. <laughs> it's, uh, they tell you what's happening, but you're not going to... You're not going to be crying or whooping for joy, I don't think. Um, so, results. Okay, let's have a look. Um, who had the best day today, boys? Starting with the, the guys, well, Italian. Before or after the protests? Well, okay. So, yeah, there is, there has been some big, big things happening today. So, there has been a protest, as you quite rightly point out. Dorian, who finished second. First. Come on. Oh, sorry. I was going to say Dorian, Kieran. Yeah, Dorian <laughs> yeah so the results today. Italy has moved up into first place. Uh, the Swiss guy has dropped to second. Dorian, I think, has moved up into third, yeah. even though disqualified Kieran. in I'm second. Right here. I remember. Huh? The other Dutch man, Kieran. Kieran, Jesus. See, that's the problem. I'm getting already confused. Uh, Thomas Goya, a couple of bullets today, moves up into fourth place. Didn't start the day well without 13th. Um, and I've got to say a big shout out, Tom Squires. I think on points wise, he had the second best day if we count all three results today and add them all up. Um, pretty solid day for the Brit. He was actually leading uh, the race I was watching on the on the TV and he was looking pretty solid. So yeah. that's pretty much how the results do. We will go through because there has been quite a few things happening, uh, but we're just going to move into the women's uh, women's. Frenchie, she's had another solid day, hasn't she? She's looking looking pretty solid, I've got to say. Uh, but Emma Wilson, power day today. Second best day on the water, I think, as well. First, fourth and a second. And then uh, Lou, the Chinese, absolutely. We talked about her yesterday. We said she'd had that 25th. She could come out all guns blazing because it feels like she needs to. And she did today. Second, second, first. She is right back in the mix, but she's got that 25th hanging over her, which will feel a bit, uh, well, a bit suspect. Um, Italian, not, you know, average middle day. Israel, not so good. Um, Lillian as well, not her best day. So there's definitely been movement today. We had more wind. That's kind of your quick roundup. We are at the halfway stage. We've had six races. There's another six to go. And then we get the medal race. So we're pretty much halfway through, which has happened very fast. I'm like, what? So there's a rest day tomorrow and then they will be back racing on Wednesday. So that's your quick review. Now I'm going to chat with the boys and we're going to go through those results because there has been a couple of things happening. Yeah, boy, a couple of shovels, a couple of, couple of everything, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, okay, let's, let's start <clears throat> off with the men. Um, you watch the racing today. What's your what, what, Give us some thoughts from today. Well, I got to say that I watched the racing, and this is about the most tricky racing you can get there. I mean, the light wind stuff is hard, but at least you're not going anywhere in a rush, and everybody's kind of going the same speed. But when it's like this, you really quickly – end up being away from the guys that you're supposed to be with. So you've seen it in the racing. One time, one moment you're leading, the next moment you look, look behind you, the guy goes the other way and he rounds in front of you way ahead. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky out there. It's just uh, uh, yeah, a bit of a lottery, but, you know, the good guys, they always get lucky. Yeah, well, I, I mean, just from the races I watched today on Eurosport, I watched uh, Kieran go from second or first to sixth or seventh in one up wind. Yeah, I mean the the leader come out of the the left hand side, kind of bang that that side, the Norwegian, and he must have took out almost a minute and something on the top guys in one up wind, which that's huge, isn't it? He came in from the left hand side, full plane in, and the other guys are pumping like anything on the other right side. Right at that uh, that that wind speed that you can, if you can get it right and you get planing, you can get enough speed going to get a good separation. But if you don't get that wind strength, you just can't get planing. And the difference between the daggerboard and the planing is huge. Um, yeah. You make a lot more, you make up a lot more ground, but your angle is not as good. So you need to do a lot more distance in, in the end to, to make the gain. But if you can plane a lot, 
then you're you're good. It was. Would you say, obviously, as a seasoned racer, is that the worst win? That on the edge stuff with shifts as well. I guess it's it. It feels like it's the one that has the most gains and losses. Yeah, but it's also the most fun because you're just. It's a roller coaster of emotions. You know, you're one moment you're looking golden and you think you can slow down for a little bit and then, you know, you can never drop the ball. You just got to yeah. keep going and keep pushing and keep putting more in the bank because even if you think you're winning your side, there might be a guy on the other far other side who is absolutely smashing that side and that side might be way, uh, way better. Yeah, no, for sure. So let's talk about results. Um, you guys obviously know... Uh, these players, for want of a better word, better, uh, the riders. Um, is there any unexpected results from today? Who, who's, who's had like an unexpected day, would you say, out of those guys out there? Or, I mean, they're Tony, all... who do you think had an unexpected day? Well, <clears throat> I would say that big fat DSQ in uh, race five for Kieran would be an unexpected day. Although I said that yeah. to Dorian earlier, and he said, does not surprise me. <laughs> well, okay, so let's let's talk about that incident. I actually did find it on the pictures. Um, if you did watch the racing today, you might have even missed it because it to me it was nothing. And I, I'm probably going to upset a few people if there's a few proper racers out there. But I genuinely, I mean, obviously, anyone who knows I commentate on the PWA, we have a no rules. I say we, they have a no rules kind of policy. So if something like this it is nothing. And the, and, the, and the punishment for me doesn't fit the crime. And what happened is there was a uh, Kieran underlaid the windward mark. So he didn't make the ley line on the windward mark. So he was coming up short, basically, for anyone who doesn't understand the the terminology, and he had to do a double tack to make it round. I think this is the incident we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. um, and he, and as he was doing that double tack, the Italian guy nailed the ley line, was coming in pretty tight, and, and Kieran did a double tack under him. It looked like he just got round, flipped the rig. There was minimal, if any, contact. No one really lost any ground. Nothing really happened of any consequence, and the race finished. Um, I think the Italian guy... Did he sec? He was second, and Kieran won. Was that what, the result? The actual result? Uh, I, don't, no. I don't know, but it, it wasn't much. It, it was I was first. Kieran yeah. was second, and right. um, and and, and uh, Mattia was third. Third. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was the way the race <laughs> finished. And then there was a protest. Obviously, the Italian protested Kieran, and Kieran's been disqualified. Now, to me, a disqualification means he counts twenty fifth place. Did well, that deserve? I mean, there's lots of different questions, but for me, as a non-Olympic sailor, how does that deserve a disqualification? Like, I just cannot, in my wildest dreams. I understand that's the rule, and we have to have rules, maybe, but I just don't see it. Like, I mean, you know, in Formula One, you might get a 10-second penalty or some something like this, which would feel like it fits the crime a bit better. But how you get disqualified is is beyond me. I mean, even on the rules, um, it was, I would say, a 50-50 call. I'm not sure if Dorian's going to agree with me on this or not. But um, technically, you have to flick your cambers um, before the other person has to change their course, alter their course. And I guess the jury found that uh, Mattia had to alter his course to avoid the collision before Kieran was on the new tack. Um, I mean, I watched the clip so many times and I still think it was clear. But, um, I mean, that's the way the cookie crumbles, right, Door, sometimes? Yeah. Uh, you got to set the stage. This is the Olympics, Ben. Nothing is for free. There is that's no... It. You have no friends during the games. And you yeah. see here, they're touching... I think they're touching boards. It's a hard angle. And the general angle that they've been filming this, it's a little bit misleading. If there's the angle that's a little bit more from Matthias' perspective, you can see that Matthias needs to wind up a little bit more. He doesn't have a, a consistent freedom to do whatever he wants. He needs to alter his course. So as soon as you're going there, you're screwed. You're okay, just... so 
if that's you, let's say, you know, hindsight or maybe Kieran in hindsight, would he have just had to do a 360? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Should have just had the two. And, right. and would he at that point would Mateo actually have had to say protest or anything? Because that used to be the rule when I was doing yeah. it. Yeah, you could hear it on the on the commentary on the um on the oh, live. This just crazy to me. Yeah. At least let him beat you. <laughs> well, it's, it's very difficult. Papa? Not right now. I'm talking. I just um, is it here yet? No, it's not here yet. I'll let I... you know when it is. Excuse me. Thank you. Downstairs. Jay. Oh yeah, you see, this is this is what's Jay's boys. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So it's uh, lost the thought train, but okay. So yeah, I was saying about protest. Yeah, about yeah he's in protest. It's it's all clear as clear as day, and you know it's it's very difficult because in this way it's just it's. It's not ego. I I have been in this position so many times. You're just like just off, you know. Yeah. And you you can you're looking for the confrontation, Matia, and you're trying to hit me. And he does, but it's his fair right within the rules. And unfortunately, that's just how this thing goes. So, Kieran, to play it safe, you know, he's he is. If there's any question about who is wrong and who's right, it's all going to be he is wrong or he is okay. So he is on the losing side of this whole thing. So if you are on the losing side and you're one and two, or sorry, you're two and three, and you don't have anybody behind you, it's it's hard to say because my friend, but he, he should have done his turns and uh, cho chosen uh, eggs for his money, as we say in Holland. And uh, and just take take a third. It's fine. It's not a DSQ. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. He could look back on this incident, you know. The, and that's how mad it is. It's twelve races after four or five years, and it comes down at the end of the week. It will come down to single points, maybe. Not when you used to race, mate. But <laughs> for these guys, it's it's close this week. It's it's going to come down to you, you know certain small margins i mean i've got to be honest like i said i understand the rule but for them to make that decision on whether the cameras had popped or not and there was no real clear advantage or disadvantage i just feel the rule needs changing or something well I mean, the thing is I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit stuck up about is that they've got empires and i see it in the comments passing by as well they got empires on the water everywhere and okay. at the time Right there at the mark rounding, they did not penalize Kieran for what he did. Yeah. So he's kind of in the clear. These situations, these things with a uh, hindsight DSQ can be avoided like that. And that's what you want to see. You don't want to see a guy because he thought he was in the clear because it's the interpretation of the rules, the vision, the different points of views. It's all messed up. And then, you know, you finish, you think you had a good day and then you come back and you go into the room and you're like, oh, oh, man, I, I feel for the guy. Really? Yeah. I mean, to me, this is the Olympics. It's it's the pinnacle of the Olympic class. There should be. There is on site, you know, straight away refereeing. Yeah. Yeah, there it's, is. Like a, it's, it's on or it's off. It's a red flag or it's a whatever. And it's decided, not this rubbish that we're seeing at the moment where they finish the race, everyone thinks it's all good, and then suddenly there's a protest, and then you see the Norwegian guy also got kicked out for something, which is, you know, I'd rather see penalties just given straight on the water, burp, you know, yeah. Netherlands, do your turns, done. We all know where we stand. Imagine this sort of rubbish happening in the medal race, or is that direct refereeing? There is direct refereeing for that as well. But like I said, there is. There is this picture is taken from a boat and probably next to this boat is the jury boat and i mean it's not that they're way back in the back yeah. doing it out for like 20 yeah, or whatever exactly this is the top of the top at the front of the fleet it's it should i just find it crazy i really do and like i say i don't <laughs> I'm fired I don't, over this one. Come I'm on. like you know and I, don't get me wrong this is not because i want kieran to beat the italian or anything like this this is just i would be saying this about anyone i just feel yeah. like a disqualification for that just seems 
insane. Like insane. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's vote over it. Oh, no, we don't need to vote. It's all good. Yeah, we don't need to. Thank, thank yeah. God. Well, yeah. And at the same <clears> time, <throat> it has been done. Um, he would have had the best day on the water. Um, but he didn't. No. And again, you know, like I said at the start, it's the Olympics. You have no friends at the games. And if somebody's going to nail you, they're going to try to nail you. You cannot assume assume something like oh he we're always been good you know he, he likes me i like him i like him on instagram i give him likes <laughs> and uh, that that's shit doesn't mean anything if they can get you they will get you because if that's the difference right now for matia to get a gold or a second or even not a medal at all he's yeah. gonna regret that moment for the rest of his life well if i did if i wasn't such a nice guy i could have had a medal well, he is just handed probably, well, definitely one of the favourites is discard. After six yeah, races, Kieran, Kieran's discard is done. You know, he cannot, everything else will count. That is the worst race he could have had. So, and he's gained a place. So tactically wise, it was a good decision by the Italian. It's within the rules. That's it. You know, that's how it goes, I guess. Yeah. No, that's it for, uh, for his discard. So, but you know, he can, he, if his head's on properly, he can manage to keep, you know, he's halfway there, only needs to keep, uh, keep it going for another couple races. And then he'll, yeah, he'll end up somewhere in the front, hopefully. Yeah. So what, what do you make of the other boys? Who, who, who for you watching videos and stuff, who's looking good? You know, who, who's looking like they're stepping up for the games? For me, I would say that Toma in those last two races, he really nicely pieced it together, and that's a, that's a dangerous Toma. He uh, if if he continues that streak, then then he'll be he'll be right in there. You know, Matthias is solid, strong. He hasn't shown me any amazing fireworks, but hey, he can push out a couple more of those seconds, and he'll be able to walk away with the win. Yeah. I mean, I mean, also, all his races have been a top four, except race eight, uh, race four, which was an eighth. So, yeah. 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 But also, and, uh, someone who did really well was Matteo, who we haven't talked about at all. Exactly. Planning conditions today. Planning what? conditions today, 10 3 4. I mean, he's a little guy. He's a little dude. Hey, it wasn't that windy, though. Come on. Planning, yeah? no, 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 no. It wasn't planning. It was, it was molding. Like, there's planing and then there's on the dagger board, it's good modes. You know, you got to sell smart modes, fast modes, good modes. And he's a smart guy. He's shown that. Otherwise, you don't sail away from all the guys like that. Yes, he's a little lighter, but you got to give him some credit. And for me, it's like he, that shows promising uh, stuff for him. As long as that typhoon doesn't hit super hard and doesn't really look like it. Well, that yeah. is the forecast that we had today. Is that the right place? I'm just making sure, boys, because I did reset my uh, my uh, wind guru. Uh, yeah, yesterday, we were looking at Porto or something. Yeah, no, I ended up looking at Faro for a bit. I was thinking it looking oh, yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was what we had today. So that uh, northeasterly 8 to 11 or whatever that was. Yeah. That's what the forecast was. Tomorrow is a lay day, but they've got rain and stuff, so maybe timed that just right. I'm going to refresh this, risk it, because see what that type. Oh no, that was maybe a bad idea. <laughs> get mine out too. And have a look. Okay. Well, for some reason, that is not. It doesn't like it. Okay. Well, my wind forecast is. We're going to have a look at Matt. Oh, God. Winger has just totally done himself in. So, okay, so that's it for the, for, the, for the weather right now. But the forecast for tomorrow on the lay day is looking a bit rainy, winds all over the place, so not a bad lay day to have. And then it kind of comes back a bit more normal. And that typhoon is on the perimeters of this uh, competition. Will it affect the wind much? Well, um, well, we'll have to wait and see, actually, because you never know with those things. They can push the system all over the place. But so far, is that? I mean, you guys have raced there. What is is that typical win? We, we, you know, you're used to racing in. Yes. Simple as that. 
Yeah, no, okay, that. I just, I'm just wondering if that, if that typhoon was changing anything, or that was kind of typical. I mean, no, no we was there in 2017. We we had a typhoon during the worlds, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so we ended up having one day with you know three quarter mass high swell and very little wind. You couldn't really see the marks. Um, so I wouldn't say it's unusual on typhoons okay. there. Well, it's the typhoon season, so anything can happen. And that when it, Ben, when we first got there, like way back in 2017, we had a beautiful session, like a whole week of sea breeze, flat water, little ocean swell, nothing special, but nice 14 to 17 knots, just beautiful. And they were like, this place is amazing. This is going to be a dream. And then as the years progressed, we saw more of Enoshima. And it was all like this, gloomy, gray, hottest, and just teasing, yeah. teasing us with a little bit of breeze and then backing off and then just flip-flopping all over the show, patchy, currents. Don't even what Have you seen the current? Well, the I, I've seen them going up to the Windward Mark, and I'm guessing there is some current because we've seen a few people make a few errors by under-tacking and maybe thinking they're going to make it, and it – you can see there's something going on. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, you can see them, especially going around the bottom gate. If they do a sloppy gate rounding, they're just like, they stay away from the gate for a long time and they are not yeah. actually rounding it. And you're just like, come on, come on. it's right there. <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, okay, so we've got a few questions actually coming in. What Thomas Goyer's previous results background? I mean, I was at the PWA when he smashed it in Japan, which is a bit round the corner from where these guys are racing here. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a bit of a machine when he gets going, as Dorian was saying before. Um, and, you know, looking at his results today is dangerous. You know, he's finished on a really good high going into that lay day. He'll be finishing on a high and he's going to start that next set, that next six races Gunning, like full gunning. I, I I have a feeling this is going to be so close at the end of the week. You know, Dorian going, went from having his best day to that disqualification, putting him back. Uh, the Swiss yeah. guy, solid, like really solid. Um, yeah. Italian guy, just mega solid. He's the worst race this week so far has been an eight, which is crazy, really, considering what I've seen on the stream and how much it's moving. There's pressure. And to ha only have an eighth on your scorecard with the forecast looking pretty similar for the rest of the week. He's doing pretty good. He's missing out on some bullets, though, huh? Yeah. Too much, uh, too much credit. Come on. Oh No, I was going to say, and that, that's actually what I said yesterday, and it's hard to explain to people, but the first place makes a huge difference on the scorecard i know this is obvious you're like well of course it does but you put in like what what tom I did today two firsts you are putting no points on and you think oh i've done well today i've got a fourth and a fifth mm -hmm. there's a hell of a lot more points in a fourth and a fifth you know it, it's just it gets crazier the more um that happens so the guys that are putting in those single digits we'll see it in the women in a minute just can make massive gains in a day. You could have a good day with a third, a fourth, and a third, and think, wow, that's an amazing day. Someone puts in three first places and they are just chuck you to the cleaners kind of thing, which, yeah. yeah, is interesting. Very, very interesting. So who is in at the halfway stage? Who's out of a medal right now? Who Who's like, you know, is there anybody that's like, well, okay, I'm done? At well, halfway. Byron. Byron. I don't think Byron is. Uh, I I thought Byron would do a little better than he did, and uh, yeah, Byron is done. China, Chinaman, Obama, as we call him, he's done too. He's got a DSQ. Oh, so yeah. uh, that's uh, you know he's counting a sixteen, a thirteen, and a DSQ as a DSQ, or as a uh, yeah. Yeah, he's gone. So, so they're both done. A bad day for the Spanish, actually, looking at that. That's not a nice day for him. He's... Well, yeah, unfortunately, that was always going to happen. He was just, he's, he's a good sailor in the light stuff when it's like that first day. But as soon as he gets a little bit more tricky and he's got to play for it a little bit more and he can't just bang a corner, he's, he's not the best. And yeah. you know, it's, uh, I, I can be harsh about it. 
it's just no, not- but it's it's the Olympics, you know. Then we're not talking about not a good sailor, obviously a good sailor, but we're talking about medals at the Olympics, and I always find it difficult because obviously I've done racing and whatever, and sometimes you finish fourth and you're super happy with it. But in the Olympics, the normal people that are watching, if you're fourth, it's like, oh, we did rubbish. We were fourth. And you think, you know, sometimes fourth is amazing. But, yeah. you know, at the Olympics, if you don't get a medal, it's like, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, no one remembers. I think it's the, if you look at the results, there's a clear line between six and seven, you know, 29 going up to 36 points. So up to six, they're all in, in contest for a medal, maybe not the gold. Yeah. But those guys will be duking it out the second half, and if you're if you're past that seven, yeah, I think uh, I I think the medal has sailed. But hey, love love an upset. Yeah, exactly. And and like we say, we're halfway, so everything can be exactly what's happened now, but reverse. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so yeah, interesting stuff. Obviously, we're going to talk about the women as well. Uh, they were on the water today. I didn't see any racing from the women today. I didn't catch any on Eurosport. Maybe it wasn't on. Maybe I missed it. Uh, did you boys see any action? No, um, they were on a different course, so the, okay. the races were televised in the morning. Um, but I and think they had, yeah. I've seen, they had a bit more wind, 14 knots or so. From the photos and and yeah, some of the I watched a little bit on the live tracker. They had the better breeze of the day, if you would ask me. Okay, bird breeze, yeah. Okay, so good days in the women. Um, hang on, I actually bought this today, boys, just because I was feeling I needed to put on some some Union Jack yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's a bit yeah. hot for Portugal, but it was the only thing they had at the shop. So yes. I was like, "Come on, Great Britain, come on, the Brits." So, well, yeah. uh, um, Dawes got a pretty big prediction to pull out for you, um, Ben. I will. Uh, uh, this will make your day. I predict Mrs. Emma Wilson to take home the gold. Come on. I had her in my top three for sure. I mean, when you look, she comes from great stock. When you've got Penny Way, or Penny Wilson, I guess now, as, as, uh, as your mom, she knows how to win a gold medal. Yes, she does. And uh, it's... She's just look at her scorecard five two six one four two, tricky conditions again, yeah. and you know that's that's even a nicer scorecard if you ask me than Matthias. Yeah, yeah, solid. I mean, to be fair though, China that's a solid day. Yeah, second, a really good second one. Really good day, one. But, but stay, yeah. But hanging over is that 25th, and that is just nasty. That is, if you have just one, well, as we've seen today, it can happen to anyone. Kieran, I think, went from second to seventh pretty quickly. It, it You know, it, the wind <laughs> doesn't choose who gets to, to get the advantage. And um, like I say, that 25th and a ninth, whereas when you look above her, Emma Wilson, worst race result so far, sixth place. That's impressive yeah. stuff after six races. Um, also, Charlene at the top. She's she's been putting in some bullets, seconds, fourth, worst race result, ninth. Definitely all to play for. That. <clears throat> Charlene's the one to beat for all the girls. Yeah. She's shown that her her racing pedigree. Let's throw that in there over the years, and she's just rock solid. Um, but I was really impressed today and yesterday with the initiative that Emma showed. Emma Plain, or Charlotte? Uh, no, Emma, that yeah. Emma showed. Yeah. She planed off the start in this, ooh, I might get the races mixed up, but I think it was the, the first race of the day and just showed like, hey, everybody, let's get going. We got to get some pace. You know, you want to be on the fin. If you want to win stuff, you got to be on the fin. You got to show what the options are and especially the good options yeah. and she's doing that and uh you know making making nice calls on that so i applaud that and with that i say it's a goal yeah that's well good to hear come on <laughs> come on um what's happened to holland today you're oh, sorry the netherlands lillian yeah lillian uh, was was struggling she Couple, she she stuck in there quite nicely. Um, most of the start, she had half decent starts, at least like semi clear. She was always around uh, either Charlene or another good sailor, so you know that's good. But she just got left behind. Uh, the girls would tack away, and she would get unstuck, 
and couldn't get up and going anymore and got rolled in, the, in, in a particular race. And you can't do that. You got to have clear air to seal in the front. And if you are trying to, uh, yeah, to counter some stuff, then you got to be right on top. It's, it's, a, it's a half a second, second decision that you need to make. And as today, especially, there is mode changes. And changing from the daggerboard to planing or vice versa, you want to do that as quickly as you can. Because as soon if you're stopped, you're not going anywhere and everybody else is moving. Yeah. Oh, you could. You definitely saw that in the races I saw today. Even just that bit where they've maybe messed up the ley line, they're coming in full plane, and then they have to put the track forward and get the daggerboard down. The difference yeah. of speed is just like shunk. <laughs> yeah, it's but also imagine the difference of speed, like coming from the planing, and then if you're getting like this was always a big thing. You get out of straps, you punch with your front foot on the mass track. You slide it forward with the back foot, you slam the dagger board, and you're ready to stand there and either do an interval for the pump to get it on the dagger board or, or relax. But if you're like you stop and then you're fumbling with the with the mouse track or you can't get a dagger board up. I saw Mattia today, he had to reach down to grab his dagger board. I saw like, that. I, yeah. I was surprised. That was like me in the old Imco days. Yeah, that's <laughs> not good. That's not good. I think it needs a little little McLuhan mm -hmm. there or a little mm -hmm. WD forty. No, it's yeah. interesting you say that because I did see that today and I thought it feels like and again, I don't know, maybe they're being very cautious. They don't want to, I don't know, do something, but it looked like everything was happening quite slowly. Obviously, it's very easy for me to sit watching going, what you you know, but it did seem like they were very hesitant in doing things. Um yeah, maybe. Well, it, maybe it's like like you're doing, you know, you got to risk it to take the, to get the biscuit. And these yeah. guys, there, it's it's do or die. And there's so many. If you if you mess up once, you don't want to do it again. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it gets rewarded, but there's a bigger loss than a bigger gain. So maybe towards the end, if they have nothing to lose, they'll take some more risk. But for now, they'll try to play a little bit more safe. And sometimes. Uh, certain guys are playing it too safe and they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. Wow. There's, been few, there's been a few questions in the comments about the um, DNFs and DSQs in race oh, five. This is, this is a favorite of mine. But go <laughs> ahead. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's been so up and down, um, particularly in that in race five, that when Tomar won that race. Uh, well, back to the, to the guys, obviously. Yeah. So the elapsed time between Tomar. So there's a time limit that you have to finish with him. And if you finish outside that time limit, then they, they pull the finish, pretty much the finish line down. Um, out. Yeah. <laughs> they pull the flag down and you can't finish anymore. And, oh, and you no. The <laughs> oh. finished so far in front and the guys at the back dropped off out of the wind that the, the back 10 guys uh, just didn't finish. So that's why there's so many DNFs. And my heart goes out to Makoto who worked his little heart out to get there 50 meters before the finish he sees he sees the flag come down and you just see him just like you know oh, like no. head, head back, arm in the air he was gutted i'm um, not surprised i didn't think they would do that that's is that I in mean, the spirit of the olympics for 10 minutes <laughs> i thought it was like it doesn't matter where you finish it's the taking part that counts but whatever mate you ain't finishing <laughs> you're too slow yeah i, I don't mean, want to blow my own trumpet and i don't want to sound like a complete asshole but <laughs> One of my well, you gotta, to do. It's just yeah. it's if you time and out people, you do having a good race. And yeah. that's you know, Thomas showed that. Yeah. Oh, to, well, I, well, the thing that I have to say is I have timed out some people in my career. I'm sure you show. have. So, I, like I said, James too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to answer the question of the DSQs, we already addressed Kieran's one, but there were also two others. One yeah. was for China and one was for Norway. Um Speaking, Dorian was talking about initiative earlier, and Andre, the little ripper, he in I think it was race six, he's like, I'm going to start on port, lines himself up, crosses the entire fleet apart from the guy at the pin. Beautiful. Uh, had a beautiful race, led a lot of the way, finished second in the end because Tuma Goya passed him just on the last part of the last downwind. Um, what I later found out is, Ben, you'll probably remember from back in the day starting on the Mistral One design, on the start line, you get a lot of like argy bargy, like 
back of the boom touching the shoulder or the head or whatever. And it's kind of like unspoken rule that nothing ever happens with that. Not at the Olympics. So, uh, you know. Not, not the one I saw online. Uh, well, the Italian, not the Italian again. Not, not so someone... This is China, China and, um, oh. and Andre from Norway. Uh, 30 seconds before the start, boom, touches the, the head or the shoulder of the Chinese guy. So Chinese guy protests him. Mm. Um, that's a DSQ. Later in the race, the Chinese guy was above Andre, the Norwegian guy, um, and, and there was contact. So I, they protested each other, both got disqualified. Oh. Now, in a good, perfect world, you go, hey, tit for tat, tat for toe, whatever you're going to call it. Let's let's call it a day. I had a good race. You maybe had an okay race, but yeah. you know I'm not going to get you disqualified. You don't get me, and that's still that's still possible. But if you got some stubborn people and they just think that they're all on the right and they're a little entitled, then um, yeah, that's that's very bad. I have to be honest. It kills me hearing that story because Olympics or not, just come on. Like yeah. there's got to be. I can't say anything because when I was part of the British team, you know, windsurfing, they're all sailing. And I was part of the youth team with Ainsley and all these guys. A lot of their stuff was in the protest room the whole night. I never even went near the place. I'm like, but, you know, just crazy how many protests those guys have and how many race results they get from being good in the protest room. It's like a whole new, well... Antonio, you'd know you're a lawyer. You're probably pretty good in the pretty good in the old protest room, but you, I don't uh, know. I just... You try and avoid it. It's not really good for the soul. No, nah, yeah. but it, it, it's like I say, after so many years now with PWA, it feels crazy. Like I, I know I had that rant earlier about that Windward Mark thing, but I just I, I cannot see how that deserves a DSQ. And 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 especially with all the power of the Olympics and on water refereeing, it just should be gone. It should just be like 360, 360. There shouldn't be anyone with DSQs unless there's something just gone crazy where someone has charged into someone full speed or, you know. How about yesterday, though? Like, I did watch the little videos you guys put up, and I, I have to bring it up, especially with the girls. That's just, uh, excuse me. This guy's so popular, yeah. Um, that that's bad. I mean, the American that was that's not done. No, that's a very poor call, and she should be de DSQ'd. Yeah, but, but, yeah, she was. She. Was, I mean, just from me watching, it looks like she came in on port where she really had no right to be with all that boards coming in. Didn't wait. Tried to tack. Touch. Then did her turns on the way down like between everyone i was just going oh god <laughs> it was, and then missed the mark i was thinking oh my life but i i guess you when you're in the situation things just compound very quickly no. yeah no? sure out out yeah but yeah you're messing Sorry. it up for everybody else in the front yeah i mean she was at the front at that point yeah but is she always there well, Dan says, no way, touch him before the race, disqualified, <laughs> done. Yeah, I yeah, mean, Dan, yeah, come on. You got to – I'm taking this one. He's in the start prepare, uh, preparation, and normally if you touch somebody or you have a collision, it's obviously it's minor with this one, but if you get thrown off before your start and you can't maintain your line or you're, you execute the program or uh, the line that you want, then it's a different story. But, yeah, a little boom to the head. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, and there's going to be a lot of that. And if you start protesting over that, you're opening a whole can of <laughs> the stuff you don't want to be happening. I, there should be unwritten. There kind of is unwritten rules, I guess. But at the Olympics, those unwritten rules <laughs> straight out the window. Um, yeah. Interesting. What's this? The collision, uh, Spash is saying, regulations date back to when there was yachts bashing each other. Exactly. And it, it's a bit different, I think. They're, the windsurfers are moving so quick, and I guess there's, there should be different rules, and there probably is with the foiling categories as well, because things are moving faster and everything's a lot more dynamic. And I could imagine with a big, massive boat and your match racing, yeah, that's kind of the game. You know, that is what the game is. But with this sort of stuff, I I don't know. 
what we got? We got a couple more questions coming in. Um, how many sports? Well, yeah, many sports the Olympics were like the PLA. I mean, the one thing I will say, and probably a lot of you, I'm very, very disappointed with the coverage. Like. At a, a PWA event, we see every race from women and men. And I know the Olympics isn't just about one class and it can't be about one class. But I somehow feel that if you just left the classes to organize their own stuff, they could do a better job somehow. I don't know. It feels like the guys that follow the sport are let down when it gets to the Olympics because they're trying to cater for the masses. So all the commentary is dumbed down to explain to people who've never seen it before. But I think it's in a negative way, not in a in a fun, easy way. It's just in a boring, crappy way, for want of a better word. Um, but it just feels like we're not getting what we would get from a blooming Peter Bray event. And this is the Olympics. It's just insane. I, I mean, obviously... The footage is really good, though. The, the, the cameras and the helicopter footage, it's all really good. It's just that, like you say, it's terrible. That, that's what I'm saying, but it's like you get you get helicopters, you get the graphics, you've got everything I would ever wanted at any event, and they utilize it for each class and have to mix it up and just – it's like, you know, when you don't do something properly and you just spread it out and you don't do anything good, you just do everything a little bit. It yeah. feels a bit like that to me. I mean, yeah. obviously, they're going to cover the medal race, and that's their deal, isn't it? It's like the medal race is where the medals yeah. – and this is kind of just like, well, whatever – but you'll still have your own personal commentators from every country covering the memory. Okay. So oh, okay. not that all of a sudden everybody moves aside and, uh, and, and listens to whoever is doing it. Yeah. But, so, I mean, I think what, there, is an, there is an international broadcast, which I think you can opt into. Yes. Um, but so if they did a really good job, then countries might actually use that um, in, in the sure. country, at least that, that uh, are well enough first in English. But also, like, there's no halftime show, you know, like between races, and they're like the amp up before it is, is I mean, it's just non-existent. You just have like the sound of waves crashing on the race committee boat. Um, could be the bit I don't get, and maybe this is why, because I'm watching Eurosport. Maybe I'm hearing, you know, maybe there is the, like maybe the BBC commentators are amazing. I have no clue because I'm watching it on Eurosport, but it it kind of feels like they should at least give the classes like the red button we have in England where you can pick your commentator or you can, you know, where you, in this day and age, it must be so easy. You could just be able to go, right, we want to listen to that. Or, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, interesting comment from Brian there says, Ben, I love you. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> but yeah. infringement was absolutely clear. The racing is uh, conducted under the international RRS. Uh, can't pick and choose your rules. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there should be, especially at the Olympics, which there is on the water referee and umpires to decide there and then what the consequences should be. It shouldn't go to the protest room and then have to, someone has to take a D DSQ because like I say, the punishment doesn't fit the crime in terms of what we're talking about with the Italian and the, and the Netherlands earlier for me. Yeah. It, uh, that's my personal opinion. They've got on board referee and why didn't they just say bomb? 360, Kieran Badlow, bomb. Doesn't make sense. That, that, again, I don't know. what's. We've talked about that a lot. Obviously, some people joining the stream late, but I, I still don't get it. Um, Kip said, I think the protest stuff is absolute to the point of... Oh, well, I'm, I'm with you a little bit. I, I don't like to see it in windsurfing. I mean, sailing, you can keep it. Fine, that's all right. You're moving about two mile an hour. Well, not now, but, you know, the lasers and stuff like this you've got nothing else to go for. You know, that's part of the racing is the, is the whole rules and the protesting, but in the windsurfing at full planing speed, I don't, don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the questions. Yeah. Is next, uh... Can we go back to some results for the, for the girls? I'm having another yeah. look at it. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we, we were talking about the first three girls who did a really good job today and, kind of general over the whole week and then there is actually uh, quite a big gap between number three and four between mm -hmm. uh, Xu from uh, from China and then Marta with 16 and then 25 points I mean yeah. that's she's she's got some work to do to get back into the to the top three yeah they're pulling out aren't they the the the, the halfway point a 10 point gap already mm -hmm. as we know things can change quickly but 
like you say, four, fifth, six, got some, got some races to put in. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited for next week, uh, for the next couple of days. It's really, you know, I, I think, like I said before, with Emma, she's been showing really good form in all different conditions, and then now Shu, you know, she did have the, that's a Chinese girl. She did have a shocker on the 25th, but consistent again, and yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna try to take. Charlene down. Well, Dorian, while we've got you here, I want you to make some predictions because I've already heard, Emma, you've got the gold. So you've obviously got some some feelings. We've obviously halfway through. So we've got a bit more of an idea now who's looking good. We know what the weather's doing. It's going to be pretty similar for the rest of the week. That typhoon's on the edge, but doesn't seem to be changing too many things at the moment. Give yeah. us your top threes in men's and women. All right, let's start with the women because we've got them on right now. So I, yeah, I like to put Emma in, in first spot. And in order for Emma to be in the first spot, she's got to beat Charlene. So Charlene's going to come in second. And whew, I, it, it, it might be that I'm just going to put Shu right there and leave the Chinese girl. They're, they're killers, man. They're yeah. just, it's, it's very difficult, I think, uh, from, from a European standpoint to understand these people almost. It's, uh, they're, they're just, they go for it. They work so hard um, and they don't show a lot of emotions. So, you know, Marta, can she do it? Katie, can she do it? Lillian, they all need to step up their games because obviously they, you know, they've been again collecting too many points. And I, I don't think that they they might be able to, to do it. It's just I see it's yeah it's I think it's very difficult, very hard to to make that adjustment in your head um, now, halfway through. So yeah, Britain, France, China. Okay, there we go. We heard it from the double gold medalist, Antonio. You stick in with yours. Yeah, you might have to readjust. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know that it's fair to through the competition just. Uh, amend my predictions based on the results but uh who am i to disagree with uh with the dutch man in america yeah i mean the only thing is for the chinese that disqualification that or that 25th in the middle one bad race she's counting it so she could lose 10 12 points pretty yeah. fast like mm -hmm. so i still think i do think you know, France and Great Britain are medals. I know it's a, I, I'm just going to put it out there. We don't want to sit on the fence. No one wants a, wants a stream where we all sit on the fence and go, oh, everyone could do well. No, uh, no, I think no. France and Great Britain medals. I am going for it. I think that they're going to handle the nerves. They've got the skills. Third place, I still think that's going to be a real battle all the way to the end. I think one bad result will kill yeah. the momentum of the Chinese. Just one, and then you get a bit rattled, I would think. Um, it's just hard to race with that disqualification. But if anyone can do it, the Chinese can. And I'm, you know, not putting everyone in China under the same thing, but everyone I've ever met that race, they just race like whew, they are on it. When they're on, they're on. And uh, she's definitely on one. Amazing day on the water today. Um, so we've got quite a few comments coming in, boys. And we, before we go on to the men, I'm just going to pick out a few. Danish TV, what's going on there? Yeah, they're mostly criticizing the commentary worldwide, I think, is what we're getting in the comments. Okay, well, fair enough. It, it, I mean, it's particularly shocking, I thought. And no disrespect to the commentators because they haven't picked the job. They've been picked by other people to do it and gone. They've probably gone, right, I want to do laser. And they've gone, right, well, you're going to do RSX today. And they go, but I don't even know anything about it. They're going, well, you'll be fine. Don't worry. And, you know, I know how that is. It's it's horrible when you don't know anything about the people because what you want as a, as a viewer is emotion and you want stories and you want reasons to be up and down and they're just not doing it for me. I've got to be honest. Um, I, I prefer, we actually just for everyone who's on there now, we are thinking of doing a watch along at least for the medal race, you know? So I don't know how it works. I've seen them do it in football all the time on YouTube. I don't know how it works in Windsor. We'll probably get about 50 people tuned in. But we're thinking of doing our own sort of banter commentary. Why the race is happening. We watch it. We're not allowed to show it because that's the Olympic way. 
Yeah, great. Good idea, that is. Um, uh, but we're going to watch it and we might do it. We'll have to get up pretty early over here in Europe. But um, if you're keen to see something like that, let us know in the comments, because I think it could be quite entertaining. I'm going to watch it anyway. So and I'm a talker, so I'll probably talk my way to myself. <laughs> so if you boys are keen, uh, we'll see. Um, we might have to do a dry run of a different race and yeah. see how it goes down. But I actually think the middle race is at a more reasonable hour. I think it is at 9 a.m. for us rather than 5 a.m. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's positive comments, at least from two people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Two people it's, watching. Oh, it. We've at least got two people watching. More, more people, great. more people in the channel commentating than people who want to see it. Yeah, good. but I think it, it's kind of good to feel like you're in one place and you can, you know, you can leave your comments or whatever because it is, it is interesting. It's, it's no fun sitting watching it on your own. You know, I, I think that's kind of why we would do it as a watch along, not to do better commentary, but just almost all sit there together and just Have chat about what's happening. You know, yeah. I think yeah. it could be pretty cool. So we need to hear Dorian's predictions now for the men because we for the men uh, let's uh, the change change the moment. Time. Yeah, you know, like we're dragging on, boys. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll wrap it up soon. We'll do Dorian's predictions for the men. I'm interested to see this one because this is a lot trickier. On this screen, you can't actually see the overall points because of the way you just slide to the right. Yeah, but I was trying to keep everyone in, but yeah, yeah. well, you will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is clever. Country. Yeah. <laughs> Um, boy, 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 boy. I think this is the hardest one um, because my man, the, the last airbender, eh? <laughs> great farts on the way. Um, that DSQ, how much is it going to play a role in the last, uh, you know, the next six races? I, it's, it's, he's, he's, Hate to say it, but he will have another one that's going to be either just around 10 or above it. So yeah. you got to take that into account. But I don't, uh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, let's make a call. Oh, this is so painful, but I, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say it. I just don't want to jinx it. But I don't think here is going to beat it all the way to the punch with that DSQ is really difficult. Just pure statistic wise, I don't yeah. think it's possible. And Mattia has shown too much consistency, plus the forecast is not looking good for like a super nice day planing. If there was a forecast with a good day of planing, he's going to smash bullets all the way. Okay, so I say mm, Mattia he might take the win, and then Kieran might take a put put Kieran in second, and Toma in third. It's tricky, isn't it? It's not. Right. It's, there's there's stuff happening in the men's. You can Tom, Yeah, I might adjust later tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, Matteo is just super consistent, but he needs to have that one particular uh, condition to, to to excel, you know, to make make it rain. And if they don't get that, then he might not make make enough of a, a damage deposit on the on the other boys. So I do think Matia is capable of doing that. And who do you think is going to win? <laughs> Tell me. Who do you think is going to win? Is Uncle Kieran going to win? <laughs> yeah, you think he is? Okay. Oh. All they right. Do it in the football where some octopus picks, like, the winners and stuff. We haven't got an octopus, <laughs> but we have a child. Raya can be our octopus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the call. Okay. Sounds good. Antonio, you sticking? I mean, yeah, well, it, it, uh, like... I, I think Kieran will come through. I'm uh, rooting with my all, all of my like. I, I want him to. I want him to really bad. Yeah, Kieran will come through. Matias not going anywhere, so he'll be second. And f based on today, um, looks like Tomar has has got his act together. So, so um, yeah, I'm going to go for a for the French and Italian to round out the podium. 
Okay. Well, there we go. Um, I think that going to round it up. I think uh, we've pretty much done it now. So we've got the predictions in from the, the double gold medalists. If you are a betting man, get that down the bookies right now. But I was going to say from what I saw today and how that wind and how the conditions are affecting it, it's going to be a real interesting battle if we can see the bloody footage. Um, but whatever happens, we will be going into that medal race on the Saturday, this coming Saturday, and it will be close. I have no doubt about it. There's going to be no medals decided. Well, there's going to be no gold medal decided before that end bit, I don't think. I think we're going to come down to the medal race, and it will be an exciting race. And like I said, we've seen people go from first to seventh today. We've seen people go from seventh to first in one upwind. So it will be exciting. We hope we're going to get planing conditions. It definitely looked more exciting today when they were planing in the back straps and, and pushing off the fin. So I'm hoping for windsurfing's sake that we do get planing wins. Obviously, this is the last year, uh, last Olympics, we're going to see the RSX at. So we'd like to send it off in style and then never see it again because <laughs> then we're bringing in the foil uh, and then that's going to be a whole new world. Um, so there we go. Thanks, boys, for joining. Dorian, legends. Um, Antonio, as good as ever. That is it for us on the live stream. We won't be back tomorrow because it's a lay day uh, in no. the Olympics for the windsurfers. And we'll be back on Thursday. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. Hopefully a bit of wind, hopefully some racing. Um, so there we go. See you for the next one. Thank you. Good, Good bread, come on.